If you were today to see a black man riding, uh, you know, a thirty-five, forty thousand dollar Harley Davidson down the street, you wouldn't think twice. But back in the early '40s, when my dad helped start this delegation, the Mohawks, that was not acceptable. They were the first club in Indianapolis, uh, made a lot of other clubs get started because of that. They made a lot of other black men get involved in motorcycle riding and especially Harley Davidson's. I think that club was one of the reasons why you can see a black man riding a Harley Davidson today and people don't blink an eye. Most people don't versus back then, uh, it was definitely unacceptable. My name is Mark Smith. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a retired school teacher slash football, wrestling, and track coach. This story is about my dad, Alan Tyree Smith, and his motorcycle dreamboat. My dad uh, grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Started working on his own as a, as a teenager and eventually migrated to Indianapolis, Indiana where he got involved in uh, auto mechanics and wound up being a mechanic for the rest of his life. Very loving, had a lot of friends. I can just remember growing up, the house with my dad and my stepmom was always filled with people, people coming in from out of town. Uh, my stepmother was a great cook, so every Saturday, Sunday, if we weren't gone somewhere to a motorcycle meet, there was, all, there was just friends and family around, so people just loved him. In the mid to late 40s or early 1950s, um, it, was, it was not culturally acceptable for a black man to be seen riding a Harley Davidson. My dad was able to uh, make a friendship with the owner of Southside Harley Davidson in Indianapolis and I think it's because of my dad's personality and his ability to make friends and was able to get a friendship with this owner of the Harley Davidson dealership that he was able to be one of the first black men to purchase a Harley in Indianapolis. Once my dad purchased his motorcycle, he needed to put his own flair to it, just like all his cars and anything he owned, he wanted to make it his own. So first of all, he named it Dreamboat. Dreamboat is a little signet that's on the side of the front fender. Um, he had the bike for about two weeks. He totally disassembled the entire bike, sent it off, and had everything chromed. So one of the few bikes around the state that was a totally chrome motorcycle. One of the most unique features on my dad's motorcycle dreamboat is uh, a mohawk head uh, that's on the front fender. That signified that my dad was in uh, the Mohawks delegation. They call them delegations, not clubs back in, but that was actually the first uh, African-American or black motorcycle club in the, in the city of Indianapolis, and my dad was one of the guys who helped start that club. I think the importance uh, of my dad helping to start that club was a lot of other black men uh, saw this, saw these group of black men in the Mohawks, uh, and that kind of enticed them to wanted to be involved in that situation. So I'm sure the fact that my dad and his friends were in this club uh, had a lot of other guys get involved in, the, in motorcycle riding, especially owning Harley Davidsons. So my dad uh, died in 1980 at the age of 55 years old. Uh, I think my dad might have had some health issues that he did not share with us, but I, what I did notice was for the last probably 10 years of his life, he was still trying to be involved in motorcycles as much as possible, uh, but he got to the point where he would put the motorcycle on his trailer more than he would riding it. He even got to the point where he would trailer the motorcycle to an event out of town. They wouldn't even take it off the trailer. Uh, so he, he strived to 
still, even though he was getting to the point where he couldn't do as much as he would like to, the fact that he had his motorcycle with him, you know, made him still like he was a part of the motorcycle uh, life. My brother and I went and got the motorcycle, brought it out to my mom's house, parked it in the garage, covered it up, and that's where it sat until uh, 2020, so 40 years. Parting with my dad's 1952 Harley Davidson Dreamboat was probably one of the toughest decisions I ever made. Uh, that motorcycle was, was a major part of our family. Um, so it was a tough decision, but I think he would be proud. Uh, rather than to have the motorcycle sit in a garage and hold on to it, covered with dust and a cover, uh, his story is going to be told. And I think his story, um, what's coming out of that, is is more important than the sport of motorcycle riding itself. The fact that. Uh, he was one of the first black men and stood up against what was culturally unacceptable back in, uh, in that time. Uh, he took it even a step further and made it as shiny as he possibly could. And, let, and other people can learn from this story. If you believe in something and stand up for yourself, uh, you, can, you can right a wrong. You can stand up for injustice, whether that be uh, because of sex or race or, or whatever. Believe in yourself. Thank you.